Hello everybody, Ellis here back again with episode 2 of my C++ game development series. In this episode, in this episode I'm going to be covering variables, just the basic ones, and debugging in Eclipse, because both these are really important concepts for when you're programming uh, variables because they're used literally everywhere, and debugging because it will become very very useful uh, later on when things don't work as they should. Um, and you can find out why pretty quickly. So let's get started straight away. I'm going to make a new project with file new C++ project and I'm going to call it variables. Now for this first half you don't need to copy what I'm doing uh, I'm just going to be explaining things. Um, but for the second half of this video copy along because um, I'm going to be showing you what debugging is. Um, but for now you're fine. Uh, just notice that I did click Sigwin here um, because we installed Sigwin last time and just go next or finish. Now you see it's opened up on the left here with a, a variables project and we're just going to right click that and go to new file. Now uh, in the file name I'm just going to write main.cpp uh, this is just by convention uh, the main file in C and C++ is always called main. Um, you can call it whatever you like, call it that if you really wanted to but we're going to go by the convention and go with main and the .cpp is just so we have syntax highlighting for C++. Uh, you can use whatever you like, but you won't get the same highlighting if you don't use CPP. And we're just going to hit finish. And it will open up here with a blank file. Now in this file, I'm just going to be writing some comments about the different variable types. Um, so, the there are eight main types uh, that you'll be using. Uh, you can make as many types as you like with classes, which I'll get onto in a later episode. But there are six, uh, there are eight, sorry, fundamental types, um, and I'll write them all out now, in order of size and roughly grouped. Um, so the smallest is a bool, or a boolean, um, and I'll just write them out first, and then I'll explain what they are. Um, a char, a short, an int, a long, floats, doubles, and a void. Uh, void should really be at the top, but I'll get onto that. Um, so you notice I put these into four little groups here. Um, there is a reason for that, and we'll get onto that now. So this first type, the bool or the boolean, um, a boolean type is well, it's kind of special in that it only takes up a single bit of memory, or it will take more than a bit, but we can only store a bit of memory in there. So it's a zero or a one. Um, so this is a very useful type because the zero or one could be looked at as a false or a true. Um, so obviously uh, I'll put this into the context of making a game because that's what we're going to be doing in this series. Uh, if you imagine we have um, a player and we have him somewhere in the world and he's just standing there and we want to have a variable that stores the information of whether he's gone through a door. Um, obviously because of this, because he can only either have gone through the door or not gone through the door. That can be either true, he has gone through, or false, he hasn't. There's no middle state there, so we could store that information in a boolean, because it's just those two states. There's no in-between or further states. So I'll just do door example. Oops. Um, so that makes a boolean a pretty useful variable type. Um, next we have the char, and this is in a completely different group, because these all store integer values. Now a char can store any value between 0 and 255. So when you first think about that, you think, you know, that can't be that useful because only 255 different values or 256 different values, how is that going to be of any use to you? Well, there are quite a few uses. Um, the one that comes straight to me is just storing a person's age. Um, most of the people playing your game will probably be less than 256 years old. Um, and they're going to be more than zero. So you could store an age in there if you really had to. Uh, but a more common use is the ASCII table. Um, now if you don't know what this is, I'm just going to open up um, a web page here that shows you. Um, but basically, if you look down at your keyboard, every key that you see on there, um, there's less than 256 of them, which makes mapping all these keys t um, into a value between two zero and 256 pretty easy. And there's a standard called the ASCII standard, uh, which does that for us. So every key you see on the keyboard, every capital letter, every lowercase letter, every number, every symbol, is mapped to a number here. So if we take the number, if we take the letter capital T, 
that's an 84. Lowercase t is 116. Um, so obviously, if we wanted to store a single letter, then a char is the data type to do it. And when we have multiple chars, and like if we have an array of chars, hundreds or even thousands of chars, we could store a whole line of text or a paragraph. So that makes char pretty useful. Um, so we'll just use ACD for this example. Next we have the short. Um, the short is double as large as a char. Um, it can take it takes up two bytes of memory. The char only takes one byte, um, but it can make it can take any value between zero and six five five three five. Um, that's just a number that you learn, um, but that is 2 to the 16, that number there, and that's 2 to the 8, because it's 8 bits, 16 bits. Um, but a short can basically take any value that a char can't, so if it doesn't fit in a char, then the next one you'd look at trying to store whatever piece of information you have in is a short. Um, an example I can think of, of where you want to use a short, is say you wanted to store the coordinates of the user's mouse on the screen. So if the user had, say, um, a 1080p screen, then obviously there's going to be 1920 pixels across, and if you wanted to store the coordinate of the mouse on the X, um, using a char you'd only be able to store from 0 to the first 255, so that wouldn't be too useful. Using a short, you can go all the way up to 65,000, and the likelihood is their screen isn't more than 65,000 pixels wide. Um, so you'll be able to comfortably store uh, their coordinates in a short. So I'll just use the uh, mouse example. Or just have mouse. We'll use door there. Um, so yeah, that's also a very useful data types. These are all very useful. They're all the fundamental types. So obviously they're going to have very, you know, a lot of uses. The next type in my list is the int. This is just an integer. Um, it's, again, double the size of the previous. It's four bytes in length in memory, and it can store values. I'm not going to write the whole thing out, but it can store values <clears throat> from zero to roughly four billion. So I'll just write four billion there. <coughs> so... <coughs> mm. Edit that out, please. <coughs> hmm. <coughs> hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> Ow. Why, why's my voice gone? I need some water, probably. Um, I think I'm okay, actually. I'll, I'll try and get through. So an inch can store uh, any value that a short can't, basically. Um, this has a lot of uses. Uh, basically, any value that you want to take an in input from a user, or coordinates in a game world, or whatever you have. If it's between 0 and 4 billion, you'd want to store it in an integer. Um, so yeah, probably the best example for this would be if we had a, a massive world in our game and we want to store the coordinates of the player in the world. Um, obviously that could be, they could be miles into the distance, they could be millions of, if we had one unit as a meter, they could be millions of meter from the origin point. Um, so it'd be useful to store their coordinates as an integer in that scenario. So I'll just do uh, x, y coordinates y coordinates again. And the last type in this group is the long. Now a long is double the size of an integer, it is 8 bytes of memory, um, and it takes much much bigger values, um, 0 to 18 trillion. So that's 18 billion billion. So essentially anything you can't store in an integer you can probably store in a long. Um, so that's where they're pretty useful. So that could be one use of this, which is used quite a bit, um, is in the clock, uh, when you're trying to store the clock value of the computer. Um, this, the value here, you can't really see it very well because I've got the bar at the bottom, um, but the date and the time can be put into one long number. Um, and there's a system that's known everywhere called the Unix timestamp, which is just traditionally used in computers and everywhere that will store the date and the time as a long number. Um, and you can encode it and decode it and put it back and forth just by using that one long number. So that's where the long comes in handy. Um, just anywhere that an inch integer can't handle or in Unix timestamps. So I'm just going to write anything else. Oops, sorry about that. My recording cut off a little bit early there um, and I didn't realize until now. Um, so I'm just going to go over that last bit again. Um, this last group here, 
is different to all the rest um, because these two values can take uh, real numbers instead of just integers. So all these four can only take integer values. Um, by that I mean if you try to store the number 3.5 uh, in a char, although it does fit in this range here, you'd probably only be able to store the 3, uh, and when you try and get that back, you'd only be given the 3, the 0.5 would be lost. Float and double, however, they can take real values, they can take decimal numbers, and they will store them. Um, the float here can store numbers between, um, I've got it here on the other screen, um, because you don't really need to remember this, just know that it can store pretty much any number you throw at it, uh, with moderate precision. Um, the smallest number you can store uh, without losing precision in a float is 1.17 times 10 to the minus 38, which is quite a big number, um, or quite a tiny, tiny number even. 1 point, uh, what is it, 1.175 times 10 to the minus 38. <clears throat> that's tiny. Um, if you don't know what that is, that's scientific notation for a very, very tiny number. And the biggest number I can store is 3.4 times 10 to the plus 38. So, yeah, both of these are really, really wide apart. You can store pretty much any number you throw at it in here with moderate precision. Uh, and then for a double, this, this gets even more extreme. Uh, in a double, you can store almost the same almost the same value, but uh, it's 308 and 308. So you can store pretty much anything you need to in either of these fairly comfortably, um, knowing that it will store. Uh, so long as you're happy to lose the precision. Um, if you say if you had 5 billion 0 0.05, you'd probably lose that 0 0.05. Um, but if you have to lose that, that's, that's just what you've got to deal with. This last data type that I've left here till last is the void type. Um, I left it till last because it, it's not really like any of the others. Um, it takes no memory to uh, no memory for the value of this void type because it can't take any value. Um, now you may be thinking that is that sounds so pointless. Why would you ever have a variable in the void type? Um, and yes, I I agree. You wouldn't ever have a variable that is just a void type because. That's pointless. It doesn't store any data at all, apart from the name of the variable, which doesn't even get stored. Um, so on its own, it is a pointless data type. Um, but when you use it as a, a pointer, which I'll get onto in a minute, then it becomes very useful. Um, and I'll show you why when we get onto pointers uh, in just a minute. So I think I might show you that now, actually, how to uh, actually declare all these variables. Um, and then we'll get onto debugging as well. Um, so we're going to um, define a starting point for our program here uh, with int main. Um, and I'm going to get on to what this means next episode. Um, but basically, this is the starting point of the program. This is where everything starts. Anything between these two uh, curly brackets is will be run when your program starts. So in here, we can uh, define variables. We can give code to run. We can you know, put anything we like and it will run as the program starts. So in here I'm going to define a few variables. I'm going to define, um, I'm going to define a char variable um, and I'm going to call it age and I'm going to put it 18. I'm going to define a short variable. Uh, I'm going to put, what should, I, what should I call this variable? I'll put x position. Oops. And I'll put this as 300. Um, and I'll put one more, I'll put a float, and I'll call this um, pi, and we'll do 3.14. Right, so these three variables, I've defined them here. You see there's no errors that came up, no orange exclamation marks, no red exclamation marks, meaning we have a, a syntax or other kind of error. Um, so that's all fine, and I'll explain how this works here now. So. Um, you know, just when I'm defining these variables, the first word I write is the type of variable that I want. And you see it's gone purple and slightly bolder um, than if I didn't, than if it wasn't actually a type. And that's because it is a type, um, and it means that the next word that you find is the variable's name. Um, and the next word we find, in this case, is age. So we're declaring an age variable, 
of the char data type, which means it could take a value between 0 and 255, which is what we did. We said this age is 18. So later on, when we refer to the variable age, it's going to get this value here. Um, and we can change that value later on in the program if we really want to, just by writing age equals 20. Uh, and this is going to make it so that from here to here, whenever we refer to age, it's going to get this value. It's going to say that age is 18. But anything after this line um, is going to have age as 20. So if we were to make it uh, print the age here, we get 18. Print the age down here, we get 20. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, the next line I have here is just the same again, but with a short. So I've given data type short, I put a space here. I've said that the variable name is x position, and I've given it a value of 300. That's fine. And float is exactly the same, but with 3.14. Um, and notice that every line has ended with a semicolon. Um, that basically means that I've finished um, whatever I'm writing here. I've finished this declaration, and I'm ready to write my next thing. Um, and that is. Um, one of the reasons we have a semicolon is if we were to write two uh, definitions on the same line, like this, um, there's just a separation between them. So without that, we'd get an error because we're getting 18 short, age is equal 18 short, and then it doesn't know what this is, and it just gets very confused, um, and we just confuse the computer like that. So semicolon means we've ended the de declaration and we're ready for our next statement, which is another declaration in this case. Um, so the next point I'm probably going to bring up is white spaces. Um, and you notice here that uh, I put a few white spaces in. I put a new line here. I've got some tabs. I've got some spaces between here. Um, white spaces can be as big or as small as you like, uh, so long as you remember to include them. Um, so when we're making this declaration here of age, we have a white space between char and age, um, because we need one between the variable type and the variable name. There needs to be a white space, but it can be as long as you like. You could have 10 spaces if you really wanted to, you could have a few tabs in there, you could even put a new line if you really had to, um, and it would still just go char, and the next thing we find is the variable name, it would just go, 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 we found the age, so we're defining the age as a char, and then we could have as many spaces as we like again, as many as we like again after this, and it will work fine, because um, white spaces can be as big or as small as we like, as long as they're there. Um, so that's just an important point uh, to note um, that may come in handy later on when you find your code is a little bit scruffy and you want to clean it up. You can align all this nicely um, and the program will work just fine, but it's just a little bit easier for you to read. Um, yeah, so that's white spaces um, covered like that. Um, now you notice in this line 20 here, um, when I've redefined age, um, the reason I can do this without saying that age is a char is we only give a variable type when we are first defining the variable. Uh, when we're redefining a variable that's already been defined earlier in the program, you don't need to give the type again. You just need to give a new value um, because it could infer the type from the previous definition there. Um, so if I was to try and write um, new age uh, equals 36, then I'm going to get an error uh, because new age has not been defined or cannot be resolved. Um, because we haven't defined it yet. However, if I'm going to give it a type, say a char, then we're fine. Then new age is a new variable with the age of 36, and anything after this can refer to new age. So I could redefine new age to equal 1, if I really had to. Um, and that will work fine, but if I try and define it up here, or redefine it up here, then we're going to get an error, because it hasn't been defined yet. It's only from this point onwards that we can use new age. So that's just another important point to cover. Okay, um, I think that's about it. Oh, yeah, there's probably one or two more things to cover, um, just that Eclipse will do for you. Um, say say we're, we're messing around with this variable age here, and by accident we put you know one too many zeros on the end of there. Um, as it is, this isn't going to have any errors, because um, Eclipse is just looking for syntax errors, uh, that is, us missing spaces here, or it doesn't know what a variable is, it's not been defined yet, blah, blah, blah. Um, but us, because we know how big um, a char variable is, it's 0 to 255 maximum, trying to store 1,800 isn't going to work, um, and we're not going to get any errors straight away, 
And even when we compile, we might not get any errors. We might get a warning saying we're trying to do this, um, but we won't get any errors. And that's because when we run the program, this is going to max out. This is just going to store the maximum value it can, and it's going to lose all the extra data. Um, so this age value is just going to be 255, and we won't be able to get back our original 1,800. Um, so just be careful of that. Remember ranges. But remember ranges uh, when you're defining variables and when you're redefining variables that they must stick to the original range of the data type. And that's also true for when you're using, uh, when you try and uh, put, say, a floating value or a real value into a, a non-real data type. Uh, if you try and do this, you will only be able to store the three. Um, the one, 0.14 will be lost, and you won't get an error about that. You might get a warning, um, but just bear that in mind. Uh, if things don't work, that's probably why. Check your data types. Okay, so that's that on variables. That's pretty much everything we need to cover. Um, we will go over a little bit more uh, in a future episode covering um, arrays and pointers. But this is the basic knowledge you need um, for us to be able to move on to debugging uh, in Eclipse.